My name is Jordan Burchette, and I'm an internet dinosaur. I've written email using DOS. I've performed research on Metacrawl. I've exported video to RealPlayer. I have a Yahoo email account. Not Hotmail, though. I'm not an animal. My other web stops have included ESPN.com, Maxim.com, CNN.com, all places where I came to believe that every article, pictorial and blog post, meant the difference between life and death for a kitten or starving child somewhere in the world. But after over a decade of 18-hour work days and repetitive stress injuries, I had come to alienate friends and family, to neglect my health, and physically threaten a biz death guy during work hours, not kidding. And for what? For all the love and blood and monthly urine you give a company, it never loves you back. But we're all looking for something to believe in, so I devoted myself entirely too much of myself to a company that didn't deserve it. Like a 12-year-old's pubescent boner, I was abused to no end. <laughs> then to make billionaires billionaire. But then I got the best news of my adult life. I was being laid off. Now I must admit, I originally intended to make this presentation a parody of the book Eat, Pray, Love. <laughs> in which a rich white woman Complains about her privileged life, travels for a year making zoo animals in the world of peoples on her publisher's dime, and then eventually makes millions telling other white women about it. But I couldn't read more than 20 pages of it, and even that took me four days. So what I'm simply hoping to do today is impart to you what I learned about online content creation during the time when I did at least. I thought for sure that driven mad by eyeblink, I'd be back to work within weeks. After three months, I hadn't checked a single job posting. I read comic books. I caught up on movies. I enjoyed my first consecutive night's sleep over six hours and years. Of course, this lifestyle was incredibly unprofitable. Despite a site launch in Hong Kong of several months, I'd become a living, breathing austerity measure. I was a New York City resident who in 2010 made $28,000, two-thirds of which came from unemployment then. I walked everywhere, unable to afford the subway. And that's when I could afford to leave my apartment at all, which is something I didn't do in some cases for up to 72 hours at a time. But my joblessness paid handsomely in perspective, allowing me to transition from the technological vanguard to curmudgeonly old man. Like Sam Worthington, sympathizing with the Navi, I had the training of a producer, but now the naive desire of the consumer to read something written in earnest. Because consumers don't know how the internet really works. As we all know, the web's a beast that must be constantly fed, regardless of the quality of the grist, a series of understaffed sites furiously scrambling to maintain a post count designed to provide maximum buckets in which to carry ad inventory, and hoping to God that of all the shit thrown against the wall, something sticks in the form of Google News or BuzzFeed spike. My experience in Hong Kong taught me that when the Chinese need to increase productivity, they don't concoct an innovative plan for maximizing efficiency. They just shovel more human coal into the fires of common capitalism. Much the same way websites today throw more Drupal pages full of words into the aggregation turbine. And it's hard to blame them. If you got a nickel every time you opened up a document in Microsoft Word, you would spend all day, every day, pressing Control-A. That's what most websites are doing. Now, coming up here and simply bemoaning the direction in which things have headed would make me a Luddite. But that doesn't mean I have to embrace everything about that direction. The internet is not a girlfriend. I don't have to love everything about it. So how did we get here? Like many of you, I came of professional age during the infancy of the internet, which gave jobs and media to people like me who weren't otherwise qualified to write on a bathroom wall. But the web pulled a bait switch on us. It seduced us with the promise of a venerated career, journalism, publishing, and whatnot. But once it got us, it let itself go, becoming fat, short-sighted, and financially unrewarding. Like an abusive husband, this once handsome, munificent medium now batters the writers on whom it depends with $20 blog posts about Kardashians and top 1,000 lists at 100 bucks a pop. But others of us came of actual age during the rise of the web, explaining much of the fluff and narcissism currently plaguing it. 
We're now relying for our information on an entire generation of producers raised on disposable blogs, paste-up sites, and glorified message board threads. While the web has made better writers of average people through email and social media and what have you, it's actually made worse writers of the people paid to do it. Articles that draw 100,000 views today wouldn't have been accepted by a campus zine 20 years ago. But it's not entirely the Twitter dipshit's fault. In 1912, hell, in 1992, the job of a writer was to produce the best material for his editor. It was then the editor's job to package that new content for consumption. In 2012, a content producer's job is to produce the best content. It's to convince the most people to click on that content. In 2012, a writer on the internet is a little more than a click salesman. Who cares what happens when the reader gets there? It's like going to a live show headlined by Charlie Sheen. I already got your money, dude. This may be more, uh, this may be no more a revelation than the moral of a romantic comedy. But it's something conspicuously scarce in this year's schedule of presentations. There's all kinds of stuff about content strategy and packaging and delivery. But what about the content itself? The quality of material online has declined right along with the compensation for it. Who's to blame? Well, for starters, I am. I'm going to crap freely on the state of the internet. I have to take some measure of responsibility for it. Uh, it's been a consumer medium for roughly 16 years. I've been working with it for roughly 13, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but you're probably all to blame, too. If you're an editor, you probably don't demand enough of your writers. If you're a writer, you probably don't demand enough of yourself. Which are then I ask, anyone here seen The Wire? Okay, so you know what I mean when I say that you have to decide whether or not you want to be real police. Back in high school, our football coach told the gathered team that we were all likely there for one of three reasons. One, to be seen wearing the jersey in school on game days. Two, to satisfy someone else's expectations of us. Or three, to know the pride of working toward a shared goal. And I've seen plenty of jersey wearers make careers of content, but... But these aren't the ones who change hearts and minds. To be real police takes personal sacrifice. You have to dispense with the, they're only paying me this much, they're only going to get this much effort mindset. Because as with the staff at McDonald's or Best Buy or Walmart, consumers will eventually settle on a shitty level of service from the content they would consume unless we demand more of ourselves. I've had writers during my experience as an editor whose haste I appreciated when the timing demanded. But these weren't the people I turned to when a truly special project came up. Taking seriously whatever work I've been assigned as a freelance writer, be it a rinky-dink blog post or a six-page magazine feature, has made me that person to other editors, who feel so guilty for paying me so little for what they get in return that they often, more often think of me when they have bigger budget features. Being paid less than you think you're worth is not an excuse to dog it. And I see it often. Users have, been burned, users have been burned far too often by the glut of machined content currently played in the internet. Re realizing their time is more valuable, they're saving their content consumption for the media that matters. And if I sound like I'm fighting windmills here, consider Salon.com, which is deliberately publishing one-third fewer links than it did a year ago, but is enjoying 40% more traffic. Instead of slapping its logo atop the same stories its competitors are all racing to regurgitate, Salon has dedicated its resources to bringing its own news for those competitors to chase. There's a similar story emerging at TheAtlantic.com, which is investing in less frequent but more thoughtful updates and has seen its uniques effectively double over the last year. Or BuzzFeed, for that matter, which recently committed itself to original content, having hired over a dozen reporters to break unaggregated news. Its founder's stated intent, quote, Making content people are proud to share. Imagine that. Most content isn't made with pride, let alone shared that way. This commitment to real content is better for your brand, plus it's the best way to gird yourself against the next change in Google's algorithm. Now the churn and burn, more is more approach to content creation isn't going anywhere. Any more than other shady financial instruments that contributed to the economic collapse. Which is fitting, since they were both developed to gain their respective systems by warping their initial reasons for being in order to reap exponential profits. Anyway, that's how it looked from my catch. Short of exhorting you all to quit your jobs, here's what I propose. Be more precious. 
Countless thought leaders in the industry have advocated less preciousness, less persnickety attention to every word, brushstroke, or half note, and to an extent they're right. But you have to earn a copy out like that by having been precious at all to begin with. And most internet copy is written with all the thought of a lunch order at Applebee's. Next, try a little sincerity. And I'm not advocating the death of irony. And snark is the official language of the internet, even for people who suck at it. But there's a written equivalent of looking the reader in the eye. Lowering the wall between producer and consumer, brand and user, that is what community development is all about. You've now seen the kind of people who comprise our industry. So there's no use writing as if we think we're cool, because we're not. Next, push back against the forces of evil. Push back against the forces of evil. Principally, you're at in marketing departments. I've watched countless editors cave spinelessly to the vagaries of account management. But it's not the ad guy's fault. He's doing his job by hooking a content sponsor. Surrendering to his often admittedly lame feature idea disadvantages every involved party, the client, the ad rep, and the poor schmucks who have to write and edit this advertorial abortion. Nihilism has too strong a grip on our side of the business, encouraging editors to acquiesce in hopelessness to the money guys. Sack up and push back. They don't want to have to settle on the 10 oldest spices brought to you by Old Spice any more than you do, but they will if you don't come up with something better. Finally, it's not about you. Everything from Yelp reviews to political commentary is more about the person writing it than the subjects being discussed or their relevance to the reader. Once you're done writing 200 introductory words about what an influence Whitney Houston was on your life, select all, delete, then make with the toxicology report already. Because you're boring. The reader clicked to learn about a dead diva, not a diary entry. And if it isn't patently obvious, I was asked to speak here just three weeks ago when someone else dropped out. That means that probably one guy, or girl, on the South by Southwest selection committee really liked my original pitch, but got shot down by the others. Three months later, one of them likely asked him, or her, what was that submission you liked so much? We just got an opening. I'm doing this presentation for that guy. Or girl. If there's even one reader out there who might really be into what you write, do it for them. And that's it. Thanks.